Hey everybody, it's the coach. This is a special edition of Wild Card Weekend on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots. With that, let's head on up to Foxborough. Standing by with the call at Gillette Stadium, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. A coach, it's a sight that has seen more than its fair share of great playoff memories the last few decades, and more could be in store as we've got playoff football again at sold-out Gillette Stadium in Foxborough. Tonight, we continue with Wild Card Weekend with what should be a great one between the Tennessee Titans and the New England Patriots. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the postseason on EA Sports. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, And, Charles, that's really all I need to say to get you fired up. It's the postseason on EA Sports. And no one's more fired up than the guys who are going to be playing in this game. This is what they fought for all year long. Go back to the OTAs, the mini camps, training camp, throughout the season to get to the playoffs. The intensity level will be off the charts. for the Lamar Hunt Trophy begins as we're underway in this AFC wildcard game. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Leading out the Tennessee Titans is the native of Lubbock, Texas, Ryan Tannehill. Spent six seasons in Miami, and now the quarterback of the Tennessee Titans, and perhaps no quarterback, maybe even no player in the game, rehabilitated his career more than Ryan Tannehill did with the Titans in the second half of this season. Took over as a starter in Week 7, led the Titans to six wins in his first seven starts to get these guys back into playoff contention. On first down, it's Tannehill. And this throw will be intercepted. Picked off by Jason McCourty. And he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, that's tough. You come in here, you dial up that pass play on the first play from scrimmage and get it picked. And you know coaches always talk about we prepare for every eventuality. You don't even mention this as a possibility when you dial up that play, right? Instead, they throw a pick, and now they're behind the eight ball on the road to get things going. And here now the offense heading back out there. They come in as a three seed in this little, very likely the last home game of the season for them, even if they win this one. But uh, while they wanted one of those top two spots, they're still in a pretty good position. They are, and let's face it, any team that gets into the playoffs, as far as I'm concerned, they're in a good position because they're doing what the rest of the league wants. A lot of people are sitting at home watching them. But you made a good point. Everyone is vying for one of the top two spots. You get an opening, you know, you get a week off. You have to play that opening week, and then you get a chance to collect yourself and see how everything else falls. But all in all, number three spot, they'll take it and run with it. Yeah, maybe they get a win here and get some momentum. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They'll run it here. This is James White. And here's another tackle made at the line. So they're converging well on the football now. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. Two runs for a net gain of nothing. Now here's third and ten. He's going to let this go for the end zone. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one. Knock it away and brings up a fourth down decision. Go, 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 go. 
Here's Nick Folk now on for the field goal. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. And this one looks good. It is good. Right down the pipe. And the Patriots jump out to a 3-0 lead. Every possession in the postseason magnified. And look, it's just the opening drive. They didn't get the touchdown they wanted, but at least they got on the board. They got on the board. They've got their home crowd into it as well. And remember, in the playoffs, the game slows down a little bit. So every point is precious. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Now this offense about ready to take over again. They just did manage to sneak into the playoffs as a sixth seed, so it's a tough road ahead. They would need to win three games on the road in January, but there's 20 other teams who wouldn't mind being on that road. <laughs> You're exactly right about that, but your point about how daunting this is is well taken because it all depends on their mindset now. How do you break it down so that you're not looking at this whole big road and say to yourself, we've got no shot. You break it down to this game right now, win that one, then worry about the rest of them after that. And that's exactly right, and the staff told us that. They've been focusing with the players on don't look ahead, but that's hard to do sometimes, is it not? It is hard to do because the ultimate goal is to do what? Is to win a Super, win a Super Bowl. Bowl. So you have to look ahead a little bit, but you make sure you focus on the game at hand. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. A shotgun snap for Tannehill. They'll get this one into the hands of Lewis. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And at his size, he's a smaller back. You can get him to football. He can kind of get lost, make someone miss. It's good for him. Yeah, it's great for him. I like what you said there. Sometimes he gets lost in the traffic a little bit. But get him out in the open field into some space. That plays to his strengths the best and keeps him out of it where all the big boys are. You know, make him make someone miss in the open field. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. And he gets this away. And look at this. This is a good one. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. Football going back over to the New England Patriots, who, as we discussed earlier, haven't had the smoothest of roads this year. But, you know, we talked about it. They're back in the playoffs for the 11th straight season. And I mentioned that Tom Brady and people doubting him late, and here we go again. But I will say, and if you disagree, disagree, this year feels a little different, doesn't it? I don't know that they have that same power. I want to disagree in a big way because we've seen this so many different times. Remember, 10 straight season with 11 or more wins, and there's always doubters. But I think you're actually on to something. This slump on offense that we saw, really starting with the Baltimore game, remember they were 8-0 up until Baltimore. Then they hit a stretch counting the Baltimore game where they went 3-3 three and three and really struggled to score. I think you're right about it. They've never looked more vulnerable. And at the same time, I can't believe I just said that because if there's anything the Patriots have done and proven to us over the years, doubt us if you want to we usually end up in the Super Bowl. Yeah, I don't want to play both sides of the fence, but I'm going to. I still wouldn't be shocked if they won the Super Bowl whatsoever, but it does feel a little different this season. If they do win the Super Bowl, it will be done a different way. And then we'll be talking about how great they are one more time. But I do He's got a man complete. Brady and Edelman hook up for a big one. 44 yards. And that one hurts defensively. They force him in the third and long, have the advantage, yet they give up the big play right there. Yeah, their offense was already warming up on the sideline, ready to come out. So much for that three and out. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. Here's Brady to throw. And this one's incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target. And that'll bring up second down. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and 10. Brady gives to Michelle. 
And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. Got an extra defensive back out there for the Titans now here for third down. Shotgun now for Brady. Got his man, that's Harry. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Titans 17-yard line. down carry it's Michelle shreds the tackle and he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown from 17 yards out and the Patriots they add on to their lead and on his way to the end zone shedding the tackle he would not be denied that's what's called finishing the run making sure you power your way through one-on-one -on -one tackle no running back wants to go to the bench and say, ah, I got stopped just short. Nick Fulk for the point after. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told. And it was Sony Michelle's touchdown scamper that polished the drive off. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. As the Titans come back out onto the field here, this is a crew, Charles, that made a heck of a run in the middle of the season. But I, uh, they might look back at that Week 15 loss at home to Houston is the one that was the turn in the wrong direction. Had everything going in their direction, to use your word, right? Because remember, that run led to Houston coming to their place in the feature game of the week in the AFC, and they didn't win it. Remember last year, they lost to the Colts at home in Week 17, and that kept them out of the playoffs. This is a good team. Whether they make the playoffs or not, they do have a big decision to make at the quarterback spot next year. But Ryan Tannehill, who played so well in relief of Marcus Mariota this year, will he be re-signed by Tennessee? Or will he decide he wants to try it somewhere else? That's a big question for the Titans to answer. Here's second and 10 now from the 35. Tannehill now to throw. He's going deep for Brown. And a double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Patrick Chung. First quarter, and now he already has two interceptions. Yeah, he's got to guard against being tentative from this point forward, though. He's got to still make the right reads, make the proper throws. I've seen guys in this league throw four interceptions in a game and win. He's got to understand, put it behind you, keep pressing forward. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They're looking sharp out early to a 10-zip lead and looking for more as they've got it first and 10. Brady and the Patriots now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. They start to drive with White, and he stopped immediately there. Tackle made by Kenny Vaccaro. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. Throwing quickly, that's caught by Sanu. And he'll be taken down as that will take us to the end of the first quarter of play. 10-0 to score after one on EA Sports. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Me and you all day, all day. Let me go. 
from the gun, it's Brady. He's got a man complete, it's Julian Edelman. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That'll wind up a gain of 27 on the catch and run. The former seventh round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert into being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 37-yard line. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 14 yards is the pickup there and a New England first down. But they're getting ready to go to work now in prime real estate after that last run. Found his spot and picked up nice yardage, didn't he? And now he's got him knocking on the door of the red zone. Him. It's complete. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run, big time pass. A one-two combination. Look pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. been practicing goal line offense all week. Let's see if they're able to capitalize here. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he keeps fighting his way into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Taking it in from seven yards away. And the Patriots, they add on to their lead. In as many coaches' meetings as we sit in, we hear the word finish all the time, don't we? And on that play, the back actually finished getting into the end zone, breaking the last tackle. Tried to wrap up, tried to use the proper technique, just wasn't able to get it done. Now Folk for the extra point. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So the drive there took six plays. And in the end, it's capped off by a seven-yard run. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. Here's Ryan Tannehill and the Dolphin offense back out onto the field. He's completed four passes so far in this game. The issue is two of them have been to the guys in the wrong colored jersey. So I'd say there's a little bit of clouded vision, right? Sometimes he sees clearly, sometimes he doesn't. I know on the sideline they'll be going over things and talk about what the coverages are and what they're seeing. So you used to look at the snapshots, now you look at the Microsoft Surface Pro. He's got to analyze what he's seeing and be more accurate with the ball. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. It's been a very one-sided game so far. They got to change what they're doing right now, don't they? You can't wait till the halftime speech to make an adjustment. No, you can't, because if you're doing it right, you're adjusting from series to series, and they need a big adjustment here to try and put some points on the board. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. Derrick Henry. And they're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage. Just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever. Second and 10. Second and 10. Throwing quickly. That's caught by Brown out wide. 
And just a small glimpse there as to why they like this rookie so much. And that's why they lit up a little bit in our meetings with the coaching staff. Yeah, when well, we talked about him, they did. Yeah, yeah, you know, they like his work ethic. You know, this guy's running every route well in the route tree and getting better at it all the time, really honing his game. They expect a pretty good jump out of him as things continue to move on. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. And those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. They have to be pleased with the way that they've moved the football thus far. And why wouldn't they be? Two touchdowns on a field goal in their first three possessions. They're playing so well right now, the field goal probably feels like a disappointment. He's airing it out for Sanu. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he couldn't reel it in. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. On second down, they'll run with White. He'll get about four as he's past the 35 to the 38-yard line. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. To throw, it's Brady. And that's complete. It's Watson. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. His first catch of this wild card game, and it's good for a first down. Two minutes to play here in this first half of the NFL playoffs. A reminder coming up at the half, as we've done all year. We'll get you to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. Coach will have the lowdown on what's going on here in this wild card weekend as we begin on the road to Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta. And Brady's throw there incomplete. Ben Watson was the intended target, the tight end. And that'll bring up second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks... They'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of 10 times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. This challenge was initiated by the guys in New York taking a look at the play. Less than two minutes to go. Yeah, I'm sure the coach wanted to challenge it, so he's probably going to send the New York office a holiday card. On first down, Brady. Steps away to his left. Dorsett making the catch. That goes as a gain of 11 and a Patriot first down. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Throwing on first down is Brady. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Brady deferring to White on the draw. Down to the six-yard line on a pickup of six as he gets halfway to the goal line. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Here's Brady. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Once you get into the red zone and the safeties have less ground to cover, you'd better be quick with your delivery. Not much space to get a ball in there. Yeah, when that field shrinks with those safeties, it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there, right? It certainly is. They end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through. And the 11-year veteran bangs it through. And the lead now increases to 20 to nothing. No problems in the field goal department so far. He's two for two. Pretty reliable here in this game, isn't he? And to me, that bodes well for them. If they need him late in the game, his confidence should be sky high. Now after the field goal, Bailey will kick it away. 
And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes Ryan Tannehill now leading his offense back out there. He and his team, they have had a rough go of it here in this first half. Maybe time for him to put his foot down here in the second quarter. Put his foot down and become a little more accurate throwing the football. He's already thrown two interceptions. He's trying to find a way to equal things out. And instead of it going to the opponents, get it to his own receivers and find the end zone. Yeah, you mentioned those two picks. No touchdown passes yet either. The Titans going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. Looking to throw again on second down. Tannehill, and his throw is going to be incomplete. He was trying to get it to A.J. Brown that time, and now it's third down. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. From the gun, here's Tannehill. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Problems on third down so far in this first half. Relatively small sample size, but they're now 0 for 3. And the average in the league, somewhere around 40% on third down for offenses. So what's the answer to this? Either convert them or don't get to third down in the first place. Get your big chunks of yards on first and second down. Here's Brett Kern now as he's on to punt for Tennessee. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Fielded at about the 28. A terrific return. 30 yards all in all. And the Patriots will have great starting position as they take over first and 10. comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And this is a spot late in the clock near midfield, though. Maybe take a couple chances, see if you get in field goal range. You do that if pressure comes, and the Titans able to bring him down. Now the Patriots going to use one of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So now 20 yards to go on second down after the sack. Work to be done. Brady going to throw. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He finds Dorsett, it's complete. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. 14 yards is the pick up there, but it'll still lead to a fourth down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. So we're at halftime of this AFC wild card matchup. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports halftime report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. The second of our two games here on this wild card Saturday is at halftime. We'll get back to you two in just a second. But first, let's remind everyone what we have to look forward to in tomorrow's action in the AFC. We've got the 4-5 matchup on tap, as it'll be the Buffalo Bills squaring off against the Houston Texans. As for our game, it has been very one-sided in that first half, but you can't take anything for granted in playoff football, as we send you back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Both teams try to avoid being one and done in these playoffs as we start the second half of this AFC Wild Card game. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here we go. 
Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And they have made this look easy. I mean, there's not supposed to be anything easy about the NFL playoffs, but this lead, yes, they're at home, but this has been impressive. And we hear all the time when upsets go. happen, teams go, go on the road, that maybe home field advantage isn't all it's cracked up to be. But you and I both know the reality is teams really fight hard to get it. Why? You don't ever have to change routine. Everything's familiar going into the game. It makes things easier, and that has paid off for them in a big way in this contest. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. First down, here's White. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. On play action, now Brady. Sideline throw, that's caught. Julian Edelman. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. That one, a first down pickup of eight. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. 10 yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. And he'll be brought down, losing yardage back at the 40. That's a big loss of three, and it brings up third down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage, even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. Wait, 20! Mike's by four. Get that quarterback! And all... Brady going to try and throw on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. Now the offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. They'll go for it. It's Brady. And able to find Dorsey. And they're able to get this one past the 30 down to the 25. Give him 15 yards on that one. And New England has a first down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. Wait, that's 53! Check, check, block 54, block 54. They'll run on first down. Michelle, and yeah, not much of a hole there as he gets it down to about the 24-yard line. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. And it's Michelle once again. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. From the gun on third down, Brady. It's complete, James White. And he gets the first down yardage before he's brought down just outside the 10 at the 11. That's good for nine yards as they convert on the third down play. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. 29, Alpha, Here we go, here we go. On first down. It's White, and nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. 
Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Looking to throw on second down. Brady, catch is made by Harry. And here he'll get it down to the seven. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. From the gun, Brady. And that's going to be caught for a Patriot touchdown. Matt Lacoste there to make the grab as his guys continue to pour it on. But look, this is a team, Charles, they faced adversity all year long. They had a fight and claw to win that division, but they're putting it all together here in the wild card game. Feels like a statement, doesn't it? An absolute statement game, a message to the top seeds. Overlook us at your own peril. We're pretty darn good. On for the extra point is Folk. And the lead is now an even 30. So that one, a 13-play drive in total. And it's finished off by a Pats touchdown. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. One quarter remains for the right to survive round one here in the AFC. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Second and six, just inside the 30. Tannehill. It's caught. Smith. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. And that's caught by Smith. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. 17 yards on that play for the Titans. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Come on, set, 50, plant. Mike, 58, right there. Guys, it's game situation. Let's go. Two. Now a first down throw, Tannehill. And for a third time tonight, he's intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Well, this defensive pressure has been constant all game long. The pass rush, the coverage, they've all been excellent. And now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand. Now this offense ready to head back out there. Can't officially call this a win for them yet, but it's looking good to move on to the divisional round. They'll be on the road, of course, as an underdog. But the age-old question, would you rather have the momentum they're going to have or sitting at home with a bye? I'm sure you'd probably rather have the bye. I mean, you remember that conference call we had before the playoffs started? We were talking with some people in the industry and, and some of the coaches that are out there. And we kind of posed the same question. You know, if you're coming off of a game like this, yeah, and you're taking, taking out a team that had that open week. Which way do you want to go? And you remember the answer they gave us? I want the better team. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, absolutely. I get it. I get it. But I think there's a lot to having that momentum of having played versus coming off of that layoff because maybe you start a little bit slower. We see those upsets happen all the time. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. 
No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Let's go, defense. Our time. It's our time. Alpha. Throwing is Brady on third down. And that will be incomplete. You can tell they were hoping for a flag there offensively. Several on the sideline motioning. Hey, why not a penalty? Why not a penalty? I, what did you see? Yeah, I think you've got to let them play. And the officials are instructed. If there's contact coming from both sides, no flag. Let them fight it out. And forces fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. Quit talking about it and bring it. Let's go. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using the ball. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by Stephon Gilmore. And that interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. Now comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe... Yeah, you've taught me this before. Maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them. Protect them. Take care of the ball. Move it downfield. Run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. It's now second and six at the 13. Heavy two. They stay on the ground. This time it's Michelle. And here he'll get it down to the seven. That play gets him six yards and sets them up with a first and goal. Coming up to the line, and they will need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Trying to pound it in here with Michelle. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So the Patriots with the football as we get you reset. They've got a second and goal now as they look to add a few more points here onto their total. Now Michelle, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. So another score there. Often you talk about the three phases of the game. Defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. So they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. Full connects on the extra point, And that will extend this big lead. Bailey now to kick it away after the touchdown. This is taken at his four. And he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And let's face it, this drive is not going to have any bearing on this game, but it's kind of important for one reason, isn't it? It certainly is. you got to get points. And, okay, all right, I'm being facetious here. But you get points, you feel a little bit better about yourself as you move on to the next one. 
Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An 11-yard pickup for the Titans and a first down. On first and 10, Tannehill. It's caught, Humphreys. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. That last catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. He's got his tight end, Anthony Ferkser. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Now it's Tannehill. And this one complete to Smith. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. Henry. Getting into the playoffs is one thing. Now they get to move on just eight teams left. The dream stays alive. Everyone's gunning for the Super Bowl. That's the ultimate. But you have to get there in incremental steps. One win today gets them one step closer. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaughan. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. The Patriots winners here at home as we say so long from Foxborough.